because I'm going to sign up. And just move around and greet somebody else, okay? Just greet someone, say hi, hello. How's your week? <laughs> Before we start, then uh, just greet everybody else.
receive all the power and wealth and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and praises. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who come and
Bible says in Ephesians 2 verse 8 For it is by grace that you have been saved Through faith It is not from yourself It is a gift from God Truly Lord and Lord It's true you It's true Christ Jesus Christ Lord. Through your love Through your amazing grace That we have been saved
who you know to always be with you. From beginning to end, to always be with you. Father, we thank you for your amazing love. For your amazing goodness. And thank you, Jesus, for your life that flows in the past. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for your goodness. We praise you, God, that you deserve all the glory and praise this adoration. No one is going to express how we adore you, how we are thankful for you, for what we are. Father, thank you. I was just looking at a passage of scripture this morning where the early church, the apostles were preaching and people were being healed and they got thrown into prison and then God opened the prison and they got out again and he was, they were told to go and go to the temple area and start sharing the gospel again. And um, the Sadducees and the uh, leaders were getting really uptight about them and uh, and I read this passage of scripture and it says because they kept, they kept preaching, they said we've got to do what God's got to tell us to do it says when they heard this they were furious and wanted to put them to death but a Pharisee by the name of Gamaliel a teacher of the law who was honoured by all the people stood up in the, in the centurion and ordered the men to be put outside for a little while. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin, men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thaddeus appeared claiming to be somebody and about 400 men rallied to him and he was killed and his followers were dispersed and it came to nothing. After, the, after him, Judas, the Galilean, appeared in the days of the census and led a band of people in revolt. He too was killed and his followers were scattered. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go, for if their purposes or activities of human origin, it will fail. But it is, if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourself fighting against God. His speech persuaded them, and they called the apostles and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles and the Sanhedrin, the, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace in the name. Day after day in the temple courts, they kept, and from house to house, they never stopped preaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. I just want to acknowledge that the band of disciples has grown and now there are millions of them all around the world. Now hopefully you're one of them. Okay? My message today is to disciples. I'm targeting disciples. I'm challenging you to be a disciple. A disciple is somebody who follows Christ and wants to be like him and will imitate him. To be a disciple, we must be somebody who reads the word, who not only reads the word, but believes the word is true and uh, trusts that word. Matthew 16 and verse 24 and 25. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. God wants us to be successful in what we do, in him. God's will is for us to be committed Christians. 
committed disciples. In Matthew 4 and verse 4, the Bible says, Jesus answered, answered the devil. He was talking into the devil. He was confronted by the devil. And uh, the devil said to him, after he'd been fasting for 40 days, he says, why don't you take up this stone and turn it into a loaf of bread? Because you must be hungry. And Jesus responds, well, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. I want to suggest to us that if we want to be healthy disciples, we have to partake of the word of God. And the word of God is, this is the word of God. Okay? It's our manual for living. You know, when you have a manual for something and it has to be put together or it, has to, it is broken, you have to go back to the manual to find out to make sure it's operating properly. You may even be using it wrong, but you can go back to the manual to find out how to use it correctly. It's important. Okay, the Bible is like that. That uh, sometimes we find that what we're doing is not working. We need to trust God because his way is a sure way. He will look after us. The, en the enemy wanted to distract Jesus when he was, after he was fasting. You know, many of us are being distracted by the devil. Maybe not by the devil himself personally, but one of his demons would want to distract you from doing things right. I want to ask you a question. Currently, right now, you don't have to answer me, but just in your own mind, what are you reading? What, are, what is the most important thing to you right now? Right now, what consumes you more than anything else? I would hope it's the Word of God, and I would hope that it is your relationship with God. If it is not that you are being distracted by the enemy from doing what God wants you to do. Okay? Is it possible that you could be distracted? In uh, John chapter 10 and verse 10, it says, The thief comes only to steal, steal, to kill and destroy. But he said, I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. Or have abundant life. The thief is the enemy again. He's come to steal, to kill and destroy. He wants to wreck your relationship with God. In John chapter 8 and verse 31, I'll read 31 and 32, or I might even read 30. I'll read a few more verses, all right? If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never been slaves to anybody. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, very, very, very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I want to suggest to you that uh, whatever in our life is hindering us or causing us to do things which are not we know we shouldn't be doing, we need to be set free. And the only one that can set us free is Jesus Christ. Okay? The only one that will set you free is Christ. Okay? We are all a work in progress. No one here has got it all together. I have confidence in saying that. I believe that none of us have. But all of us have a need for Jesus to help us, or the Holy Spirit to help us in our walk with Christ. Psalm 
Spiritual freedom is freedom from sin. Psalm 119 and verse 105 says, The word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. We need the word of God. We need the guidance of the Holy Spirit to live the life that God wants us to live. And the word of God should be really, really important to you. You know, today we have the Word of God in many different forms. We can have it on our phone and on an app. We have access to the Word of God wherever we go. And so maybe you're not someone that reads the Bible like this, but you're in the Word. Hopefully you read the Word, the pure Word, it's good to listen to somebody else sharing. I'm sharing today, but it's, it's not as good as the actual word. Hopefully the anointing is here and, and, it helps, and it helps to set us free. But the reality is we should be a people of the word. So I want to suggest today, my message, my main focus today is that we've got to be people of the word. We've got to, be, we've got to believe the word. We've got to read the word. We've got to apply the word. Okay. I was, um, while I was sharing or preparing for this message, something, a strong message came to me. Because the important aspect of the word is that we do what the Bible tells us. You know, some people are so understanding, have so much knowledge, and that, but unless we do what we, with what we've got, it's not worth a crumpet. In fact, Jesus said, in, in, after we were sharing on the parable of the sower, and the disciples come up to Jesus and he said, well, I'll read it. It's in uh, Matthew chapter 13. The disciples came to him and asked, why do you speak to the people in parables? And then Jesus replied, because... The knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven have been given to you, but not to them. They were disciples, okay? The others were just there and he was making disciples. And then he makes the statement, whoever has will be given more and they will have an abundance. However, whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. Now, God's grace is so good for us that if we are a person that purely reads the word and doesn't do anything with it, he won't allow it to condemn us, he will take it away from us. He won't, get you, he won't allow you to be overloaded with knowledge that you can't do anything with. You know? Because if we know everything we should be doing but we're not doing it, it can have a negative effect upon us. There was an, um, a speech, or you know, you know how a coach in the huddle, and he's encouraging the players to, to, um, to play. Now, during the 1975 grand final, there's a famous speech from a famous coach, an Australian football coach. I'm gonna, I want you to listen to him now. Please do something! Do! Don't think, Mick! Don't hope! Do! At least you can come up and say, I did this! Or I shivered it! Or I played on! At least I did something! Okay, that's John Kennedy, the coach of the Hawthorne Football Club, and he was encouraging his players. He says, Don't think, do! Do something! Do something! Okay, I want to. That's my message today. My message today is do something. Whatever the Lord is speaking to you about, do it. It's not enough to just know it. It's not enough. It's not enough unless you do it. Do what God is saying to you. What is God telling you today? Okay, if He's telling you to share the gospel with somebody, do it. Share the gospel. If he wants you to, be, to, to, to be transformed, 
Be transformed. Change. Do. Be obedient to what God is saying. Okay? Do something. So you can have all the knowledge in the whole Bible and not do it. See, that was the problem with the leaders in the, in the, uh, the, the Sadducees and the Pharisees. They understood the word. In fact, they could probably recite the first five books of the Bible. The first five books of the Bible, most of them could recite it, but they didn't do it. See, a disciple is a doer, is, is an imitator of Christ. Now, Paul could say, follow my example as I follow the example of Jesus Christ. He, he was talking about, and there's not many fathers, but when he, he, says, he says, imitate me. Do what I do. If you don't know what to do, do what I do. Be the example. How many people are watching you? How many people are watching you and they, they see you and they say, this person's got their life together. If I want to be successful as a Christian, I'm going to do what they do. Are, is anybody watching you? Do. Don't just think. Do something. Don't hope. Do. You now we have a lot of people who hope a lot. The, the Word of God should, should be life to us, not just theory. It's not just a theory book of, of what the past happened and the future has got. It is a now book that is not theory, but it's practical. Okay? It's real, reality. And God wants us to be, to be reality. As I said before, Paul said, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. We must not only say the right thing, we must do the right thing. It's a life-changing book. Are you the same person that you were the day you got saved? Or are you transformed? Are you a different person? The other thing is, we ought to never forget the benefits of being a Christian. There are many benefits of being a Christian, you know that? And, and, and they show outwardly. Peace. God has made us peace, given us peace with God. Okay, peace. Jesus said, that I give you peace, not as the world gives you peace, but he gives us peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. It doesn't matter what goes on, we can have peace. It's peace is not, a, it is not an absence of conflict. You see, we think of peace as everything is fine. But you can have peace and assurance that everything's all right in the middle of conflict. It's a different kind of peace. The peace that Jesus is talking about, it's the peace that we should all have or be working towards. When somebody sees you, what do they see? A person that's uptight, frantic, or somebody who's in control. It's all clear, it's all good. The Bible says that God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Self-control. I want to read out the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Does that remind you of yourself? 
Okay? That, see, see, fruit grows. You can't manufacture fruit. It grows. Okay? And therefore, it grows in a life that's connected to Jesus. If your life is connected to Jesus and through the trauma and life, whatever life dishes up, through that, you will have self-control. You will be able to show love when you're under pressure from somebody who's having a crack at you. You can be joyful all the time. I ask you the question, are you happy? Are you happy? I'm serious. Are you happy? We've got to be happy. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. In the book of Philippians, about 17 times, Paul says either rejoice or have joy. Joy is a fruit of the Spirit. Happy, we should be happy all the time. It's a little bit of a, a checklist. Am I tapped into Jesus? Am I happy? Under difficult times, am I still happy? See, that should be growing from us. You see, if, therefore we need to respond to... You know, Jesus comes up with a couple of heavy ones. He says, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. Do you do that? Love, I've been talking about love. Loving someone that, you don't, that doesn't love you. Remember, the love we're talking about is unconditional love. It's not, it's not expecting anything back. We will love and, and expect nothing. This is the love that Jesus is talking about. Okay? You know, your life is a witness in the world we live in. It's, it, it's, it's a model. This is the end result of accepting Jesus Christ. Not the end result, but part of the result of accepting Christ. No longer frantic. No longer panicking but cool, calm, and collective, under pressure. It grows. Have you got your life in order? Have you got your priorities in line? I'll just briefly go through a couple of priorities. I don't know if you have the same priorities as me, but I believe that biblical priorities is one, the first person who's the most important person in your life should be God, should be Jesus. The second most important person in your life should be your spouse. More important than your work, more important than ministry, more important than your, than your hobbies, your spouse, number two. And then your family, your children. After that comes the other things. We can tell a person's priorities about what they do with their time. Probably... Today, nearly everybody you see has got their mobile phone and they're flicking on it. If you went up to them and you had a look at what they were doing with their phones, you would probably find out what the most important thing is in their life. When you're on your phone, what, is, what, are, the, what's, what are you watching or looking at most of the time? That's probably what the most important thing to you is. Either that or what are you spending all your time at doing? 
I used to be a workaholic. My whole life was centred around work. And I thought I was doing a good thing. Looking after my family, priorities in, in life, looking after the future, that was, that was it. That was the, my priority in life. There's a wrong priority. It's not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing to be a hard worker. It's a bad thing when that take overrides everything else. And we can say, well, um, the future of my family is the most important thing. I was not a Christian at the time. I found out later that God had to be the central point of my life. And my family was more important than my work. You know, one day your work will be finished and you'll still have your family. Or else you'll have lost your family and you've still got your job. <laughs> Don't laugh because unfortunately the divorce rate in Christians is not much different to the divorce rate in non-Christians. Okay, so that means Christians have their priorities in the wrong order. Not all Christians, but some Christians. Therefore, we need to get it right. You see, where do you find your priorities? I'm not going to have it as a study, but it's in here. What's the first and greatest commandment? And then after that, love your neighbor as yourself. See, people and God, or God and people, are more important than jobs and money. Priority. We need to be people of the word. Okay? Man shall not live by work but bread alone. But we should be, but we, see, in the natural, we've got to be healthy, right? We've got to eat the right food. Okay? The right food. You know, in that day when Jesus was on the earth, bread was the, was the main source of food. And that's why he says, turn, it, turn it into bread. Not anymore. Today we live much healthier than those days, don't we? Some, some people live healthier than that. Whatever it is, but we need healthy food. If you want to survive, you want to be healthy, you want to get, be fit, you need to eat properly. Okay? If you want to be spiritually fit, if you want to be spiritually healthy, you've got to absorb the Word of God. You've got to read the Word of God. You've got to partake of the Word. It's got to become part of you. That means you know what it says. You don't know everything, but you know the priorities. Because it's important to you. So therefore, I want to suggest to you this morning... You say, well, you're most... Take I, I want to suggest to, to you this morning that if we haven't got that right, we need to get it right. Okay? We need to be healthy, spiritually healthy. We need to have a relationship with God. I don't know. I've never been to a mosque and I've never understood their prayer and they get together and they, or they pray and, towards Mecca. So many, I don't know what they say. Who, anyone knows what they say? I don't know what they say. I'm sure it's not relational. See, see, our prayer life is relational because God speaks into our hearts. He guides and directs us. He confirms when we're reading something in the Word of God. It, 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 it makes, has an impact. It's relational. He's communicating with us. The Word is important. I've gone through quite a few verses of scripture. I, I want to incorporate the communion table this morning, today, and therefore I'm going to read the word. I'm going to read a, a passage of scripture in the Bible. We'll reinforce our relationship with the Lord.
We should be thoroughly equipped to be a disciple. You know, a soldier has to be thoroughly equipped for the tasks at hand. If he's not, it has dire consequences. Okay? We need to have that. Paul instructs Timothy to be a good soldier. Like he's talking about being a good disciple. But be prepared. Okay? Allow the Holy Spirit to direct your life. When a hazard comes or a problem comes, that you can still think clearly and listen to what God is saying. It's important. Today, I'm going to read a passage of scripture now out of the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, I want us to listen to it and appropriate it It's, it's one you've heard before. It's Isaiah 53, and I'm going to read the first nine verses. Okay? This is talking about Jesus. I don't want to have any, try and make any mysteries out of this. It's talking about, it's a prophetic message about Jesus. Okay? Who has believed our message, and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? He grew up before him like a tender shoot, like a root out of a dry ground. He had no beauty or majesty to attract us to him, nothing in his appearance that we should desire him. He was, desired, he was despised and rejected by mankind, a man of suffering and familiar with pain. Like one from whom people hide their faces, he was despised and we held his esteem, and we held him in low esteem. Okay? Jesus was constantly despised. Some people, a lot of people embraced him, but important people of the day, they rejected him. They despised him. It says, surely he took our pain and bore our suffering. So do you believe this is the word of God? This is a now word for us today. I don't know what your situation is today. I don't know what you're going through. But if you're suffering today, surely he took, upon, he took up our pain, your pain. Okay? He bore our suffering. Yet we considered him punished by God, stricken by him and afflicted. In those days, they saw what was happening to Jesus as punishment to him from God. They didn't, recognize, they didn't all recognize who he was. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was pierced for my sin and your sin. The punishment that he bore was not his own punishment, it was our punishment. He was crushed for our iniquities. That's talking about sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. I, mean, I'm, I'm, I said before that we have peace with God. We have peace with God only because Jesus broke, cleared up the blockage we had between God. Yeah. Now, Sin separates us from God. But what Jesus did brought us and God back together again. That we're at peace with God. God is not there at you to discipline you, to give you a hard time. He's there to love you. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him and he, by his wounds you were healed. You know... A little later, what we're going to do is I'm going to ask anybody who wants any form of healing this morning, we're going to believe God that, that we can receive healing. It, it says there by what happened to Jesus, we can have healing, we can be healed, okay? So he's dealt with our sin, he's dealt with our pain, he's dealt with our 
um, suffering. He's dealt with our healing. It all happened on the cross. It says, We like sheep have all gone astray. Each has turned our own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay? He was oppressed and afflicted, yet we, he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, a lamb to the slaughter and like a sheep before the she- shearers is silent. He did not open his mouth. And we know that when, when we read it, he, he did not object to anything that anyone was doing to him. He was being tortured and yet he didn't complain. By oppression and judgment, he was taken away. Remember, he went before Pontius Pilate. He went before the religious religious leaders. Yet who of his generation protested? Who of his generation? When we read the passage of Scripture in the Gospels, nobody was protesting. Nobody was protesting. Just let it all, everyone just let it happen. About the only one who actually protested to any degree was Pontius Pilate himself. He says, I find nothing wrong that this guy has done. I find no gall in this. But they kept saying, crucify him. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living. For the transgression of my people he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor any deceit was in his mouth. Not even the disciples protested. If anyone should have protested, you would have thought, But instead, they denied him. We ought not to deny him. See, if we are a person of the word, then we would be 100% assured of eternal life. 100% convinced that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who came from heaven to pay the penalty for our sin so that we could be redeemed and therefore one day spend eternity with God and have confidence in that. To know for certain that that we would spend eternity with God. That we would have no doubts. And this message, which is so... Amazing is for the whole world. That we would be prepared to tell other people about him. This is the gospel. This is the good news, even though it sounds horrific and it was horrific, it's the good news. Because it's the only way to the Father. Because he sent his son. So in actual fact, in the beginning it was saying, he was like before him, it was before God. God was an eyewitness to the events that happened. We're going to partake of the communion table this morning. And this morning, if you are in a situation, there's two things I would like us to happen first. I'd like us to um, reflect, two hours, reflect on our own life. And if at at the moment you are doing something that you shouldn't be doing, which is called sin, to confess it before God. I, I, I don't want people to come out confessing their sin today, but just before, just reflect and say, Lord, I want your help to change and repent, which means that 
your desire is not to do it again. That, that, that you want to stand before God this morning and say, I know I'm struggling with this and I want you to help me. I, I don't want to do it anymore. So to repent. Okay? The other thing I want you to do, if you're here this morning and you have some ailment that you would like healing for, I want you to be bold and to be faithful, faith, have faith, to stand before, to come out the front and I will anoint you with oil. You see, Jesus has paid the penalty for us, sin and for he wants us to be healed. So therefore, we can believe for healing. Now the Holy Spirit is on the earth today and therefore I want to anoint you with oil because the Bible says if there's any sick amongst you to call the elders of the church, I might even ask Ray and also Jim will to come out and anoint people with oil and it says to confess your sin. That's up to you. If you choose to say, well, I'm struggling with something or whatever it is, and that's what the Bible tells us. I'll just read it. It says in James chapter 5, Verses 13. I'll start from verse 13. <clears throat> it says, If anyone amongst you is in trouble, let him pray. If anyone is happy, let them sing songs of praise. If anyone is sick, let them call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise, the Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So this morning, I'd like us to do what the Bible tells us. So if you're in that category, I'm going to I'll encourage one of the elders of the church to pray for you, to anoint you with oil, and we can join together and believe God that God's going to touch lives. Hallelujah. Maybe you're, maybe you're in a situation where you're struggling with something right now. You say, I, I, I don't know. How, I, we will anoint you with oil and we'll believe God to give you a way through your circumstance. Hallelujah. Because we want to be disciples, we want to be committed to the Lord, and we want to allow the Lord to do whatever he wants to do in our life. Praise God. So um, that's it. I'd like those who have... Um, in fact, we can come out and grab our own, take our own today. All right? But if you want to have... If you have uh, an issue or you want to stand before God on behalf of someone else, maybe you, maybe you have someone that you know that's really struggling in some area right now or wants to be healed, we can anoint you with all and believe that God can, can heal that person. All right? So uh, just feel free to just come out. Father, we thank you for the bread and the cup. And Lord, we ask, Lord God, as we partake of it today, that, Lord, it would be life to us. Lord, that the bread, we would, re we would remember the body that was broken for us and we would also remember Christians all over the world. And Lord, this cup, which is a cup of blessing, Lord, the word, your word tells us, Lord God, that, that it's um, this wine that we partake of is a symbol of the blood of Jesus, which was shed on Calvary for us for the remission of our sins. We acknowledge that right now. We pray a blessing upon it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ruth wrote a song and she's just playing the music then. And she just asked me if she wouldn't mind. She would like to just share that, uh, read it out to you. Just come over here then. Just easier here. Hello. 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 Um, I wrote this song a long time ago. I've written quite a few hymns and songs to the Lord, but I don't very often have a chance to share them. 
that the Lord really has been impressing on my heart that this is a gift he's given me and um, I want to be able to share it with you. Um, and this is, I feel, I mean, I, this is the first time I have brought it to play. I'm, just, I'm not going to sing it because I haven't got the voice anymore, but um, this is what Simon has been preaching about. And it's partly my testimony as well. Christ, it's called Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ the Lord is the Prince of Life. He gives life to us who come to Him, being come to God, being cleansed from sin by His death on the cross. Holy Son of God, Eternal Lamb. To pay the price, he became a man. Defeated death, fulfilled love's plan. Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ the Lord is the faithful one. He has richly blessed my wayward soul since I turned to him and my sin confessed. He has cleansed my heart of every stain Washed by his blood, I forgiveness claim. New life is mine in that precious name, Christ Jesus the Lord. And we sing hallelujah, hallelujah, <laughs> Christ Jesus the Lord. Christ the Lord is the King of kings. He will reign supreme. The mighty God and Lord of lords, no more Nazarene. He is King of the Ages, Prince of Peace, Lord of Glory, Son of Righteousness, Creator, Redeemer. He's coming soon. Christ Jesus the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you very much, Ruth. Appreciate that. Let's just take a moment and reflect. If you have something on your heart or something challenging or, or something you need to confess before the Lord, just do that now, just quietly, before we partake. as we are about to partake of the communion uh, the piece of bread or the piece of that you're about to partake of represents the body of Jesus which is broken we read before how it was torn and, but also represents many many people on the face of this earth because this body is very large now it's, a, it, it, it's made up of millions and millions of people and we want to recognise all those uh, as part of the body of Christ and that we are a same part of that as well so now let us just partake of that piece of bread uh, and remember the suffering that Jesus did for you let's partake together And also this cup that we are holding in our hands right now, with this juice, represents the blood that was spilt upon Calvary for the forgiveness of your sin. Um, that's the punishment. The Bible says that the, uh, uh, without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. And the blood was shed on Calvary for you and for me. Let's partake together this morning. While we're in the presence of God, if there's anybody here that is believing God for a touch, for healing,
for area, any area of your life. Maybe, maybe you're, you're challenged because you're not bold enough. But you need an anointing for to be bold. Maybe you need to confess something. I just want to give opportunity if anybody wants you to come out the front and uh, we'll have the elders to pray and anoint you with oil and believe for a touch from God this morning.